I guess, your thoughtful and seasoned and educated view, the long view and the philosophical view of what's going on, as well as being able to deep dive into some of the details. Since it's approaching the end of 2023, a lot of people have been watching the metals as a potential safe haven from the chaos that's been going on in our fiscal and monetary world and the, the world of banking and the other equity markets and everything showing signs of strain, the debt market showing signs of strain. And we wanted you, if you could first kick us off with a year in review, looking at 2023 in review for the precious metals and what your view of the, the outcome and the outlook are for them. Absolutely. So <clears throat> this comes from uh, Bob Johnson. And Bob does, a, it's called Gold Sheet Mail. I've been on it for years. And uh, just a shout out to Bob. Kind of, a, in my opinion, a quiet guy, but he does great work. And I'm grateful that he does these numbers so I don't have to. So what's interesting, Dunnigan, is what's gone on in the metals this year. We'll start with the precious metals. But gold, the only two that are up on the year are gold and silver. Uh, gold is up almost 10% from the beginning of the year. Silver is up about one and a half percent from the beginning. Of the year. Palladium is off almost 40 percent and platinum is off about 12 percent. I want to expand on that. <clears throat> so gold is at 90 percent, 95 percent of its all time high. So it's almost at its all time. Silver is at 47 percent of its all time high. So it's got a double, a little more than double from here to get to its all time high. Platinum and palladium are at about 37%, so about one-third of where they were at their all-time. So they've got a triple from where they are. I've been pretty bullish on platinum for some time, and I continue to be bullish on platinum. There's many reasons. We've outlined it in great detail in, the, in our premium service. I won't bore you with it here, but uh, and I also did a spread trade, short <clears throat> palladium and long platinum, and that's worked out very well. But I want to talk about the other metals briefly because there's a fair amount in our, you know, peer group that are about this super cycle of commodities. And I really don't buy into that too much. There could be, and I think there would be a super cycle in the monetary metals and in the ags, but stuff that you really need. You need to eat and the metals are a way to protect wealth. So anyway, let's just go through this real briefly. There's not one uh, metal element in the um, base metal group that's up this year. Aluminum's off 8%, cobalt's off 36%, copper's flat, down 1%, lead's off 6%, nickel's down 47%, tin's off 3%, and zinc is off 16%. Not even one of those is up. So, you know, I'm just trying to make the point that we are in a massive contraction in the economy on a physical level. I'm not talking about how much money they've printed showing positive GDP. I'm telling you the truth. As far as the stocks go, the HUI is off a percent. The XAU, the main index for the top tier mining companies, is off about 3.5%. The dollar is flat. Crude is down 6%. Heating oil is down 16%. Natural gas is off 32%. And gasoline is off 14%. So I think that's a pretty good look at the year end coming into the year end. Uh, I think gold could get another, some more, much, a bit of a lift here. Um, maybe get a new high before the end of the year. <clears throat> I wouldn't get too excited until we get above uh, the new high, which is, I think, 2070 in US dollar terms and stay there. We've got to stay there for several trading sessions in a row before I'm convinced that we have a new bull market unfolding where resistance becomes support and we're going to continue upward. I believe that will happen. I'm pretty sure, I'm almost certain it will happen in 2024. I'm not sure how strong gold will be going into the end. So, what you've described, we were for years talking with you and others about the bubble of everything where we had for the first time the markets are showing us without a shadow of a doubt that we're in a position where the dollar is on its last days. One thing you mentioned a little bit ago is that people should start preparing if they haven't already. If they already have started, they should continue and accelerate. Uh, one of the concerns that 
has emerged about those who are preparedness minded. And we've seen this happen in, in past uh, financial crises or other types of crises is that those who are the most responsible are those who get punished. Those who are the most irresponsible get bailed out or whatever, or, or businesses that were, or banks that were, that sort of thing. So there's this, uh, there's this term hoarding that gets used. It's, it's a perfectly good word, but it gets used to, to smear for, for publicity reasons uh, in, in a narrative that those who have been hoarding uh, gold, that happened back in the, in the Great Depression. FDR himself said that those people who've been hoarding gold have been tying up the money supply. And that's why we're having uh, so much financial difficulty. So people have to willingly and, and patriotically turn their gold into the government and get paper receipts for it called dollars instead. And that way they get, we can get ourselves back on our feet. But according to Wayne Jett, the author of Fruits of Graft, Great Depressions then and now. He said FDR was one of the instigators who was a linchpin behind the deepening and worsening and lengthening of the Great Depression by the actions that he took. Every one of those actions that he took was against the good of the common person and for the good of uh, either very large, the, the very largest uh, too big to fail uh, uh, oligarchs or banks or also uh, those who would take away people's rights and build bureaucracies instead of uh, uh, re representative republic that we we're supposed to have. So I would like your view from a philosophical and experienced judgment standpoint on uh, perspectives for people who are planning on being responsible and prudent. And whether it's putting in a garden, whether it's getting some land, whether it's uh, finding out where their local farmers are in their area so they have a good connection with people who are a reliable source of food if, if the big system goes down with a cyber attack or anything else, or people who are planning on stockpiling uh, gold and silver so that they have real money to carry on their life's work and take good care of their family. What would you say to people who are concerned that if they do these things, they're going to be seen, they're going to be painted as the enemy in the eyes of their friends and neighbors and family by the media and by the government and so on, because, <laughs> because they did the right thing, the responsible thing. That's a great question. I would say to thine own self be true. So, you know, in your heart of hearts that, uh, you know, this program and others like it are giving you the straight information. So be true to yourself. How do you prepare? Well, starting the garden is really a good place if you can. I mean, even in an apartment, you can put in these little, you know, herb gardens or whatever. Not that that's going to save you, but at least you can do something. So, do I own self be true? And then the idea that the truth will set you free. And that's also, you know, maybe overstated, but it is, is also very important. And to not really be concerned with what others think. You know, if you are true to yourself and your family, then it's not too hard to go out and buy more, you know, foodstuffs, for an example. And I have always recommended, and I was way ahead on this food situation. I was talking about a food sort of about a year or a year and a half before anyone said it in the mainstream. And it doesn't cost you anything more. I mean, it'll cost you more out of your pocketbook, but it's probably the best thing you can do. And certainly buy stuff you really eat. I mean, the idea that you buy you know, something on sale or whatever that your family doesn't like, that's, that's a bad idea. Unless it's really popular and you, can, you know you can barter with. That'd be the exception. And then as far as freeze-dried food, I have a fair amount of it because it's easy, it's convenient, but it's expensive. You're really better off just buying staples and canned goods than to go that route. But if you have the ability or, or the need, the good thing is that they're all in buckets. you got a handle. You can grab and go with them. Uh, so you could consider that. But I would say, you know, food, water, maybe a second job or something you can do on the side well before you get into gold and silver. And if you have excess savings and you are at a fairly high level, it doesn't have to be above 250000 if you've got 20000 and you've got, you know, prepped up and you've got pretty much everything you need, certainly you can move into the gold or silver market and have that real money outside of the system because if the bank freezes up is or there's a bank run or they reset to a new system where you have to have a real id and the only way you're going to get access to your funds in the bank is to let the bank go into this real id system where i call it the beast system uh, you're going to be darn happy that you took you know a sufficient of account of what's going on in the future and prepared for that 
I'll call it eventuality. I don't know if it'll happen or not. I know what the bankers want. Whether it'll be achieved or not remains to be determined. And I'd say in the long run, we win. But in the short run, I think there's going to be a lot more pain and agony, unfortunately. So if you could mitigate that, and one last thing done again, you probably have some great ideas. It's prepare and prepare for your, your neighbors as well, if you can afford it. You know, there's nothing better than, uh, you know, having a community that gets along and realizes the circumstances and the idea being that uh, there's nothing more powerful than the truth. And the truth is now we have to take care of ourselves more than ever. Calvary is not coming to the rescue and the government isn't here to help us. So we've got to help each other. So that's a really good thing. I don't have it anymore. I'm just stated as kind of, I don't know, David Morgan was such a radical, but at one time I had, um, 50 pound, I think it was 50, 60 pound uh, bags of uh, winter wheat. And that stuff, if you store it properly, is good for a long time. And I basically, my idea was that uh, all my neighbors, I live in a remote area, but I had like 30 bags. I was going to give every one of my neighbors a bag of wheat, right? And it's two things. One, you can grind it and make bread. And two, you can, you can plant it. And because it was, you know, it was from the Amish and it wasn't, you know, GMO. So some of it you could plant and some of it you could eat. And, you know, everybody would have something at least in my whole neighborhood. So actually I got, I didn't sell it. I, I moved it to a different location. But anyway, 